Hey, it's Anna. Welcome back to Solar Trip Podcast. And if you're new here, hi, I'm an independent music artist. I write, record and produce my own music. And I also film these weekly Solar Trip episodes. We're talking about all things spirituality, metaphysics and all of that kind of stuff. But for this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different because it occurred to me recently that I like my birthday is next month. By the time you watch this, it'll probably be kind of close to March. So my birthday's in March. We're in February right now. And I realised like it's getting close. And that also means that I have been dating for 12 years. Like, what the fuck? I swear time goes so fast. And obviously when you're in certain situations, time kind of slows down and it feels like it takes forever to get out of like really bad situations and stuff. But it hit me that I've been dating for fucking 12 years and that just flew. Like that literally went so quick. I don't even know what happened, you know? So anyway, I wanted to film this video talking about everything that I've learned in that time because I recently got out of a relationship kind of like, well, literally New Year's Eve. So it's been just over a month. Is that a month or two? Something like that, just over a month. So it's not been that long really. And it occurred to me like, I have always been in really long relationships and this is the first time where I've actually wanted to just take probably a year, like a year sounds good to me, just to take some time to be by myself completely and really get comfortable with myself and just, I don't know, just kind of feel good on my own because a lot of my relationships have been very codependent and yeah. If you watch any of my other videos where I talk about um, like healing trauma and stuff like that, then you'll know that I definitely was a really shy child and didn't really like get to know who I was until the last few years. So I spent a lot of those relationships just lost is probably the right word. I don't even know what other word to use, but yeah, just a bit like when you're not comfortable in your own skin and you feel a little bit lost and you kind of cling to other people because they make you feel good, you know? Like if you've ever experienced a bit of romance and relationships, then you know that that feeling when somebody is interested in you and when they pay you attention, I don't think there's a feeling like it, you know? I feel like that is the best feeling in the world. And I am a hopeless romantic, like I am a Pisces, you know, we do tend to kind of live in our fantasy world. So, I don't know, I've just always been a real like hopeless romantic and I love being in love. So this is the first time where I'm actually taking a longer period of time. Like I've decided I'm taking a good year to myself. So I wanted to talk about all of the things that I have learned through being in relationships with people because my longest one was like five years. And I realized that this whole world, this whole like experience is about relationships everything is connection whether it's like even in Korea it's still building relationships with people you know and like colleagues co-workers all of that kind of thing and it, like no matter what area of your life you go into and you look at it's all about connection with people you know you could have all the money in the world but if you've got nobody to share it with then it's kind of completely pointless and it doesn't mean anything and it won't fulfill you it won't make you happy but how you spend that money, like on experiences that you get to share with other people, that's the thing that actually matters and that actually makes you feel good. So I realised that connection is literally what this experience is. It's the one thing that we want, the one thing that we crave. Even when we're like teenagers and we're sitting there watching these brainwashing cartoons and brainwashing um, fairy tales, you know, like Disney and stuff, it's always about connection. You know, even if the like concept and construct of what a relationship should be, even if that's a little bit toxic and the films that we watch and stuff portray like a toxic kind of mentality that we buy into. But at the end of the day, it's still all about relationships. It's still all about connection. And yeah, I feel like I've learned quite a lot to be fair. But one of the like main things I would say I've learned is about your relationship with yourself 
but and I know that sounds really cliche, but I also realised that if I didn't have these connections with other people, then I don't think I would have developed the relationship with myself. So I realised, like, even though... Because, like, if you look at a teenager now, like, I'm about to be 27, and if I look at my 17-year-old self now, if I was to give her advice and stuff, I know that she wouldn't listen because she's not experienced anything, so I would literally be wasting my time because, like, I feel like you have to go through it, you have to experience the first love, you know, like the first romantic relationship and experience that lust for each other, experience sexual chemistry and, like, the physical attraction and stuff. I think you have to experience that from the like naive standpoint of having never been through it before and not really knowing how relationships work I really think you have to just go through that and you can't like you can't tell somebody the mistakes that you made and then expect them not to make them because they're not going to learn that way or at least I don't think I would learn that way so I realised there's no like regrets, there's no point in regretting anything that I've done or any decision that I made because it all led me to here and it all helped me understand relationships and what they are and what they mean and like what I need in a relationship, you know, and also how to give what other people need, how to meet other people's needs and how to respect boundaries. I feel like these are all of the things that I learned that you only learn by going through it and by experiencing it and by like it's literally trial and error so you learn boundaries you learn what you need you learn what you don't like and what you do like through actually connecting with people and experiencing it you know so I'm kind of glad that it's taken me until now to have the time on my own I don't think I needed it earlier I think I actually needed to I mean, clearly I needed, otherwise it wouldn't have happened, you know, everything happens exactly how it's supposed to. So I know that I needed to go through all of these trial and error relationships and just really experience that and figure out what I like and what I don't like, you know. And then later on down the line now, at 26, and I'm about to be 27, now I can just, like, I know what I need. So when I take this time to myself, I already know why and what I'm looking for and what I'm aiming to achieve with that, you know, because I've just been through relationships already and I know like where I fucked up, where other people fucked up, where I didn't implement boundaries when I should have done and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah. I just think like for anyone watching, if you're watching this to try and like learn something so that you can do better, I do think that you can do better, but then at the same time, you still have to go through it, you know, so don't beat yourself up if you're, if you've been through some shitty relationships or if you messed up or the other person messed up or whatever it might be, like we're all just learning and we're all trying to figure out ourselves and literally you're learning yourself through other people. So like as they say, everyone's a mirror of you in different ways. And I've gone through the seven of a scene mirrors. I'm about to film another one as well. Like, I can't remember what number I'm on. I think I'm on number five. And there's seven a scene mirrors that like show how other people and your experiences are a reflection of you in different ways. So we already know that like everyone reflects us and you can easily take, or maybe not easily, because it's not easy, but you can find a lesson within everyone that you meet in every situation that you go through. There's always a lesson to be like found and looked at and worked through and integrated, you know? So there's no point regretting or beating yourself up. So I think the one thing that I have learned in 12 years of dating is that you don't own people and a lot of my relationships were very codependent but I feel like even if they weren't we still have this tendency to want people to be what we need and want them to meet our needs and to give us what we lack or give us what we crave you know like we want them to be overly affectionate or we want them to 
like take us out here there and everywhere and spoil us and make us feel really good and you know we want other people to really pour into us and I'm realizing one of the main things that I've learned throughout the years is definitely that we don't own people and you can't get people to do any of that like you literally can't they either will or they won't and some people might do certain things and then they lack in other areas but like that's just the human experience you know we're all flawed none of us are perfect and I think that I spent a lot of time wanting certain things from people well actually I spent a lot of time not even knowing what I wanted but now that I do know what I want I realize that I spend a lot of time trying to get people to be that and really like hoping that they'll be that and maybe they have the potential to be that but they're not actually stepping into it right now and it's like you can't get people to step into something that they're not ready to become yet you know even if they have the potential to be like incredible in one area that you really want them to be incredible in even if they could potentially get there you can't rush their process you can't force them to be that you can't manipulate them into being that, you know, you can't encourage them into being that. They're going to be it whenever they're ready, if they're ready, if they ever do decide to be. So I realise we actually have to take people at face value at what they present to us, you know, because we can spend so long worrying about what they're going to be and what they're going to do and what's going to happen in the future. Like, how long will this relationship last? Will this person turn out to be a liar will they turn out to have cheated will they turn out to do this and that like there's infinite potential so everyone could turn out to be everything bad you know that's a possibility but then they could also turn out to be everything good because that's also a possibility so it's like you can't waste your time worrying about what they're going to be and what they're not going to be and literally just take them as what they present because whether it works out or whether it doesn't you're gonna be okay you know like you're gonna be fine you were fine before you met them you'll be fine after they leave your life and nobody ever really leaves your life anyway because we're all connected so maybe temporarily in the human experience they leave your life but as we know when we go back out of this experience when we leave our vessel and we go back to the all back to source back to consciousness whatever you want to call it we're all like almost reunited you know like we're back to being one back to being a part of the all and we get to see the bigger picture of what experience we had in this lifetime and you realize that none of it really matters as much as we thought none of it was really as like a bigger deal as what we felt in that moment you know so I just really realized like you don't own people and you can't control them. They're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to be who they're going to be. But your job is to see that and not ignore the red flags. Is to pay attention. To literally listen to you. Listen to you. Listen to them when they're telling you who they are. And they're showing you who they are. You know? Like if somebody tells you, um, oh, I don't know, like, you know how some people say, like, little phrases where they're like oh yeah I always I always am messing around like I've never really been that serious or something like that you know when they literally are telling you that they don't do that or if someone tells you that they've cheated before like they've already told you what they've done now does that mean they're going to do it again no there's infinite possibilities they may they may not but what I'm saying is like listen to what people say and what they do and find out about like their past relationships and how they handled those if they're spending the whole time slagging their ex off like that's a red flag that tells you that they don't have respect for somebody that they used to be close to so what makes you think that they're gonna not do the same to you you know because at the end of the day relationships like there's no like there's no deadline with them 
because obviously we're in a human experience we don't know exactly what's going to happen further down the line so you have no idea how long you're going to be with somebody for and it could last the whole lifetime it could last 10 years it could last two weeks like we literally don't know and all you can do is trust how you feel and trust what your intuition is telling you trust how your body reacts to being in the person's presence you know that's all you can do so I realized how like we don't actually have control over a lot of it but then at the same time we do have control over certain things like ourselves and our decisions and what we choose to do we have free will so I think like a key thing for me now and it's something that I still struggle with and still find really difficult to do but it is to pay attention you know and it's not just about looking it's about hearing it's about feeling it's about all of the senses and really paying attention to them paying attention to how your body feels when you're around somebody because it does react in a certain way there's been many many times when I've walked in a room or I've met somebody for the first time and I've instantly felt off and felt like uncomfortable especially as women we always have to pay attention a lot more to how people make us feel because of like danger and situations being really dangerous for us you know our safety is one of the top priorities I mean it is for everyone but I know that like for women that is the key in our lives is we need to feel safe you know especially for intimacy and stuff like that we really need to feel safe so yeah there's many times when I've met people and I've just felt like this person is not nice or this person is arrogant or this person is a bit judgmental like you can feel that and the things that they say and the things that they do you can kind of tell if you pay attention and I spent so many years not paying attention to these things not paying attention to the signs and then you end up in relationships that you didn't really want to be in because you know that the person's not right for you but then we get in them and then we try and convince ourselves that they are right for us and oh it's not that bad oh like but they do actually do this good thing so that kind of makes up for this bad thing and it's like no you can have your cake and eat it too you can actually have somebody that treats you right that is respectful, that is good to you, that does show you that like they value you and value who you are, that is interested in similar things to you. Like we don't have to compromise and settle on the foundation of what a relationship is, you know? Yeah, they're gonna have flaws. No, they're not gonna be perfect, but that doesn't mean that you have to settle on the fundamental things that we need. Do you know what I mean? And for some reason, I convinced myself that we should allow little things, let them slide. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> we don't actually have to do that, you know. So and considering there's like billions of people in the world, we tend to like limit our minds and restrict ourselves to think that we're only going to meet people that are like within our little circle or within our town or our city or like. Do you know what I mean? We tend to like really restrict our minds and you don't think about the fact that you could meet anyone. There's billions of people, especially now with the internet and stuff. Like there's infinite potential here. And why do you have to... Also, why can't somebody that's in your location be the perfect person for you? Like why can't that happen? Just because you don't know who they are you know there could be somebody that you didn't even know lives around the corner from you and they're actually perfect for you so I don't know I think we close off our minds a little bit too much and I definitely did that so we don't actually need to settle and I really feel like so many people in the world settle for things that they're not happy with and part of that is through fear like I've done it too and part of that is through fear and um like doubt and a lack of self-confidence and belief in yourself but also a lack of trust in the fact that like you can actually meet the right person and it can happen if you would just allow it and like get out of your own way you know but oftentimes we're trying to like mold people into who we want them to be and we're trying to like we're parenting the guy or whoever into who we want them to be and stuff you know and 
yeah I just think it can be quite toxic and it's definitely something that I have got myself into many many times <laughs> but now I feel like after all of this time it's like it's just no more settling like I feel like actually the thing is that I'm not in a rush and oftentimes when we're young we are in a rush because we really want to feel that like we want to feel that connection and that love and the passion that comes with it you know so we're always in a rush to just go to anybody that's interested in us or anybody that we click with or you know we're just always wanting that thing to just hurry up and get here so we don't take the time to be like let me heal from this previous one. Let me really heal from the fact that that broke up and that really hurt and that upset me. We want to fill that void, you know? There's an emptiness, there's loads of emotions that we don't process. And I'm speaking from my own experience. I don't know what you've been through, but for me, I know that I would avoid those emotions and then just try and find somebody else to fill that hole and make me feel better. And then I would get in another long relationship with somebody new and it would just be like, like a build up of these emotions that you never process so then you get to the point where you feel like you can't live without that person like you literally can't function without them because you have so many emotions that have been building up for so long that are trapped inside your emotional body really wanting to come out and they won't and they can't because you won't let them so then you just keep like spending time and your whole life until you take this break you spend this whole lifetime just like having a void there's a hole in you there's a void there's fractures within your consciousness and within your emotional body and your chakras like they're just completely unbalanced and you don't actually know that it's there or you don't know what that root problem is because you've been running from it for so long you know so until you take the time to actually get to know yourself and figure out what you need in a relationship but not just in connections but what you need in life like what is it that makes you feel happy what is it that makes you feel good you know what is it that makes you want to get out of bed what are you passionate about what kind of hobbies do you like until you take the time to uncover these things you're just gonna forever spend the time like chasing a void something to fill that void you're gonna constantly want these people to be around you and feed you compliments and like give you attention and affection and buy you things and take you places and do all of these nice things but you can't actually enjoy it or like be present in it because you're you have fractures you have a void within you and all of this emotion of lack and unworthiness and self-doubt and low self-esteem you know you can't get rid of that if that's the foundation that you've built these relationships on then there's going to be cracks all the way throughout the whole relationship and that is something that I've really learned is that you need to know yourself you need to take that time to get to know yourself and that doesn't mean that you can't be in relationships because I still feel like you learn about yourself by being in them so it doesn't mean that you can't have them and it doesn't mean that you have to take months and months or years and years to yourself it just means that you pay attention to both, that whilst you're giving to somebody else and you're fulfilling their needs, you make sure that you fulfill your own, make sure that you know what your own even are, you know, so like you can do both at the same time, but oftentimes we ignore ourselves, we avoid ourselves, we don't spend any time by ourselves of an evening like it doesn't mean that you're not with somebody or that you don't have a relationship but like you can easily just go into your bedroom and spend half an hour journaling out your thoughts you know but like I was in relationships and I wouldn't even do that I wouldn't spend any time just hearing myself and even if I was at home by myself I would be distracting myself with other things like tv and stuff like that and I would play sims a lot and I realized that actually with sims I was fully distracting myself because I was creating this like dream life in the game where the person would be a singer and they would be an entrepreneur and they would make their own money through like writing, you know, like writing books and stuff in the fucking game. And I, it's only like dawned on me recently now that I literally was creating my dream life in that game. And I would play that game for 
hours and hours and I'm talking like 10 hours in a time I would fully just sit there and play it over and over and over and over and it really is me trying to escape and fill a void so there's many many ways that we can use different things to fill that void and help us escape from it but until you actually face it until you face yourself it'll always be there you know and then you could end up in really bad situations, which is what happened to me. And I ended up in a really abusive relationship. And I know that that happened because of where I was at mentally and emotionally before I even got to that point. So now when I look back from my first relationship when I was 15 to now, I fully see the path like I see the journey of how I got into the different things that I did and I see why that happened and how that even happened and why I would ever choose that how I would ever allow that I fully see the progress of it you know it's like having a bird's eye view because all of it came down to where I was at mentally and emotionally and if I'd have like taken the time when I was 15, which obviously you're not likely to do when I'm 15, so I'm not like judging anyone or myself because I understand that that's not something that you'd even think to do when you're that young. But if I had of taken the time when I was a teenager to really get to know myself and understand who I am and what I like and what I don't like and all of that stuff, then it would have happened differently, I know for a fact. But of course, at that age, you don't really think about these kind of things, especially back then with no social media and stuff. I think we had, we might have had Facebook back then, but it was nothing like what it is now. And YouTube was nothing like what it is now. I don't even think YouTube was around when I was 15. I can't even think what year that was, maybe 2009, 2000, 2008, something like that. So yeah, anyway. What I'm trying to say is that like when you take the time to know yourself and know who you are then you you pay attention to the flags the red flags you pay attention to how other people make you feel and stuff and then you make better choices I think that's the key that's like the one thing that I've learned is how to make better choices and how to listen to myself like it's choices that are in alignment with me rather than like trying to cling to something out of lack but I do also understand that when you're young and stuff, you're not likely to pay attention to those things. And it's only through the process of getting in these bad situations and bad relationships that you then start to take that time to get to know yourself, you know. So I don't think this should be like a... Um, self-punishment kind of thing because it is what it is you know we all make mistakes we all choose dumb decisions we all pick relationships that we know full well are not good for us that we shouldn't even go near but then we do it anyway you know so there's no point beating ourselves up about it or regretting it because it always gets you to where you need to be but I just think the one thing if you wanted my advice if you asked for it if my younger self asked for it I would say get to know yourself. Even if you stay in relationships, still take that time every day to just spend half an hour with yourself, hearing your thoughts, hearing the issues that you're having, the problems that you're going through that day, like really just hearing. I think that's the main thing, hearing yourself, understanding yourself, and then knowing what you like and what you don't like. And also detaching from the need to like control other people and control the outcome of what the relationship will be or how they'll behave and just taking accountability for yourself and what you can do you know and then just like because I feel like now if I was to get in a relationship or even in the, the last one that I was just in um I feel like I was way less attached to it way less um codependent and I know that that's because now I know I'm okay so I'm not like desperately um like frantic or like I can't even think of the word but like I'm not desperately like worrying and panicking about how long it's gonna last or whether this person's gonna hurt me or stay or what they're gonna do like I'm not stressing about the outcome I'm just chilled like I'm cool 
you know, like, yeah, you go do you, I'm gonna do me, let's meet up, let's have some good times, then let's go do our own thing and build our careers and do this, and then let's meet up and let's have fun, make memories, you know, like, there's no attachment to needing that person near me in order to function, which is what I really felt like for so many years, you know? So I think that is a case of getting to know yourself and being comfortable in yourself and then letting go of the need to control other people. So yes, I feel like I'm gonna end up going around in circles now. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you're listening on the podcast apps, thank you so much for listening there as well. And I'm gonna be, I mean, I feel like this whole world is about relationships. So you know, I'm gonna make a million more talking about this. And there's probably so many more areas I could have gone into. But I think these are just like the two key things and they all come down to being comfortable in yourself because when you're comfortable in yourself you no longer attach to other people so I think yeah the key takeaway here is to just know who you are and that is a lifelong process by the way that is not something that you're just going to know I don't know every aspect of myself right now either but it's something that you can take the time to learn as you go through these relationships you know so yeah thank you so much for listening and watching i really appreciate you all links to my music and my social media will be in the description box below as well as my phone number you can text me or whatsapp me if you want to chat a little bit further you know i'm always there to just talk to anything you're going through i'm here to listen or you can dm me on instagram as well but yeah so all links to my music and also my merch that's all down in the description box below don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already on youtube and i will see you in the next episode bye oh yeah i think you like me yeah i'm icy cooling in the white tea oh yeah i think you like me yeah i'm icy cooling in the white tea oh yeah i think you might i'm the thing you like in my range all white oh yeah i think you might i'm the thing you like in my range all white